Hey guys, what's up? So, um, if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you guys know I'm a huge Python fan. I mean, Python was my first language. And um, sometimes I feel like I talk it up a little bit too much. I get some uh, hate mail uh, about some of the things that Python's not good at. And, I mean, people accuse me of basically glossing over the fact that, uh, that Python's not the solution for all problems out there because of a few videos that I've had that, that you know, where I, I tout Python as being one of the best languages. I still think Python is one of the best languages, but it is important for uh, newbies out there to understand that, that Python isn't like the, um, you know, the tool that solves all the world's problems and that um, there are certain things about Python that, that, very, that are very lacking compared to um, other, other, you know, languages, which I'll try to talk about here in just a moment. So let's go ahead and get get into uh, just a few things about what sucks. And number one, multi-threading in Python is uh, basically non-existent, not possible. And uh, most of that is due to the fact that Python has a uh, GIL, uh, which is short for uh, Global Interpreter Lock. And the main reason for that is um, what it does, it, it prevents multiple threads from being executed on by Python at the same time. So what that means is that if Python can't execute on multiple threads at the same time, it means that it's not a, um, you, you can't do parallelism or at least multi-threaded parallelism uh, with, with Python. It's impossible. And it goes back to when Guido was designing the language, he, um, he used the GIL to, to basically make uh, Python thread safe because at that point with um, some of the C, uh, like the C memory management, um, you know, the, the core of Python's uh, memory management is not thread safe at all. So um, you could have race conditions on multiple threads if, uh, if Python's executing on both of them. So basically, um, without the GIL, Python could be trying to update two pieces of uh, memory at the same time. And, and that's where you get into those race conditions where it just becomes a very uh, problematic thing. And it'll break your program. It'll, it'll crush uh, performance, eat up all the memory which obviously uh, causes the program to break and it's never a good thing, never good when the entire program freezes up. So other languages like uh, Go, Java, C Sharp, all, that stuff, all, the, all those languages actually do uh, multi-threaded programming uh, much better than what Python is, is capable of doing. And um, you know, unfortunately that's one of the biggest concerns even in the Python community today with um, some of the rise of like a sync and a wait uh, with JavaScript, with C Sharp, um, having a lot of success there with Go's um, concurrency, which is a different pattern than the async and await, but they have a, um, the, the core implementation of, of those features um, are something that, that Python just really can't do without um, rewriting a lot of what Python is. And, and unfortunately, you know, Python is a, a very easy language to just write out some variables. It's not, it's, uh, you don't have to declare your types in advance. I mean, you just, it's that dynamically interpreted language. language. So, um, trying to address some of those concurrency problems and multi-threaded problems is going to require that, that Python not be the Python that we know today. So most likely they're going to have to do something. Um, but so I, I guess I don't know what that answer is, and I don't think most of the Python community knows what that answer is going to be at the, at the moment. All right, next thing, uh, packaging in Python sucks ass, um, and that's the, the best way to put it. Um, I don't know how many times I've tried to download some sort of module. Like, um, I remember I was using uh, Python Satchmo at one point, and like that son of a bitch had like 18 requirements of packages that it required, and and those packages needed specific packages um, to be able to work. And um, I, I've run into that problem on so many different projects with Python, where like you're just missing some sort of package, um, and it's all just because of the, the fact that the, the packaging in general in Python is very, very lacking. All right, next one. It's not as fast as um, many languages out there due to its dynamic duck typing. So duck typing goes back to the phrase of if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Um, so in Python, you can declare methods and you don't even have to, to you know give the user any sort of um, advanced warning on what type of method uh, or values that that method is going to return, whether it's a string or a list or a dictionary or whatever it is. Um, all that is just um, dynamic uh, behavior of Python that you don't have to declare those things in advance. So you're not saying, hey, this um, you know this integer has to be a string or something like that. It's just you can pass in whatever the hell you want, and um, 
Python will just you know treat it according to what it thinks it's going to be, and that's um, that's in a gist what duck typing is. But um, just the dynamic nature of Python makes it a little bit slower than other languages, and in fact, a lot slower than compiled languages out there like C++ or, or even C Sharp. Now, here's one of my big concerns with, with Python is that it doesn't really have any good IDEs. The best one out there is probably PyCharm, which is made by um, the JetBrains guys, and it's it's pretty good, um, but it's not anywhere near as, as good as some of the editors out there. Um, and a lot of Python hackers, I'm not even, I mean, they probably don't even use IDEs, but um, I feel like for a corporate environment, IDEs are very important, and right now PyCharm is the best thing that we have, and, and I don't think it's that great, but that's you know it's just a personal opinion. Now, one of the issues with uh, Python compared to other languages like C Sharp or Java or C++ or even C is that uh, there are not as many jobs. In fact, uh, even Ruby, um, just because of the Rails uh, framework and, and the adoption rate of, of Rails, probably has more jobs out there than, than Python. So if you look at the overall amount of jobs that are available, um, Python is, is growing extremely fast um, in the last few years. Uh, it's pretty much, I, I think, grown by like six or seven hundred percent according to Indeed.com over the last five years. But even still, if you look at the grand scheme of things, you know, how many jobs are there in Python compared to C Sharp or C++ or Java? Uh, it's not even close. Um, so Python is you know is probably beating Perl, but even then, I mean, it's on pace with you know probably a little bit greater than Perl when it comes to jobs now. So once again, Python is making extremely good headway there, but they're not quite there as far as not even close to being there as far as uh, C sharp or Java. Now, one of the things here, a lot of people don't care about this, especially Python people, but I hate the fact that Python doesn't have a switch statement. Um, so we're doing this L if L if thing, which I think is just terrible looking. Um, I miss the switch statement when I'm working with Python. I, I use a switch statement in C Sharp. I use it in JavaScript. Um, I believe it's in PHP and most other languages out there, but it is not in Python. One of the biggest concerns over the last five years or so is that um, Python is facing a huge difficulty trying to get people to switch from the Python 2 to Python 3. The other day I was working with the uh, WorkZug um, library. I don't even know if, you, if that's how you say it, um, but that is the um, the WSGI um, program that is used in Flask is built on top of that, and, and Eve is built on top of Flask. So ultimately, I was trying to um, trying to port uh, WorkZook over to Python 3.4 and 3.5, which is what I was um, aimed at. But unfortunately, that library barely works with Python 3.1, and I was getting just massive errors. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't have enough time, and I'm sure just like many other Python developers out there, you just don't have enough time to port all this stuff from Python 2 to Python 3 and some of that stuff um, you know was you know breaking changes that it just it really sucks when you when you do like a, an upgrade and it's not backwards compatible it always takes some time um, to get these packages and, and things updated so even to this day there is still a major problem trying to push everybody over to Python 3 uh, because mainly it's just not supported there for things like Flask and um, and Django and, and and that stuff's really important for somebody who has um, you know their bread and butter relying on working Python code they they can't have things breaking so it's the reason why even on my production websites I'm still using Python uh, 2.7 with Django so there you have it I'm not bashing Python I'm not saying that Python sucks or anything like that there's just a few things that kind of answers the critics out there of, of why Python may not be the best language uh, depending on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to write a game engine, you, you have no reason and no business doing it in Python. If you're writing uh, native web apps, you're probably not going to write it in Python. You could try to use Kivi, um, although that damn thing wasn't working at all um, as of a year ago. But I mean, uh, so the you know, if you, but if you're going to do a website, uh, no reason why you can't use Django. Django is um, plenty fast enough for most sites out there. If it can run multi-billion-dollar companies like uh, Pinterest and Instagram and um, and discuss and, and many other websites out there that uh, I'm sure that it would fit your needs um, just fine and, and it is very easy to work with so um, speed and, and um, multi-threading is not necessarily as important as some people make it out to be so just because there's a few shortcomings doesn't mean the language sucks it just means that if you're trying to do multi-threaded programming don't use Python I mean that's simple as that alright guys um, thanks for watching and have a good day please subscribe bye